This is the feedback of the reading part of the exam. And you did a lot of things well. I noticed that you revised key vocabulary, like the parts of the house, school life, and sports. And that's why you did a good performance in general, but especially in the reading one, which was about the parts of the house, the reading two, about school life, and the reading four, about sports. You also were very successful translating the passage, my, mi madre es alta y tiene los ojos verdes. Tengo el pelo rizado. You did really well with descriptions and differentiating tiene and tengo. So you all, most of you, found that the translation was My mom is tall and has green eyes. I have curly hair. However, there was a little bit of confusion with what the dining room means, and I want to clarify this. El salón means the living room, not the dining room. El cuarto de baño means the bathroom. Y el jardín means the garden. As most of you chose, the dining room is el comedor. Comer means to eat. And comedor comes from that verb, from comer. So comer means to eat, and if we add it door, is a, which is a suffix for place, we have comedor, which is the place where you eat. Also, I would like to share with you some techniques to face reading more successfully. And this is, well, you need to know your vocabulary, you need to know your grammar, but also, also always look for familiar words and cognates. So, for example, in this question, who mentioned the school food? Was Luisa, was Raul, or was Simon? Cognates or familiar words would have helped a lot. So, if we know that comer means to eat, we're going to look for words that are similar. For example, Simon, which is the right answer, talks about la hora de la comida. Y la comida en mi instituto es lo mejor. So, comida comes from comer as well. It means the food. And look, you had another cognate here, which was la fruta, which means, as you can imagine, the fruit. You may not know el queso, which means the cheese, but this was giving you clues about who was talking about food. Also, who is musical and creative? This question was easy to answer as well, looking for cognates. And in this case, as most of you saw, it was Raúl. Some cognates that would have helped to answer this question successfully, for all of you, was música, which means music, violin, which means violin is the same in English, and piano as well. You have three key words there, three cognates, that you don't have to understand the whole paragraph, but you will be able to answer this question successfully. And here, who likes the English teacher? So now we need to know this word. We need to know how to say English in Spanish. So that's why you had to revise your school subjects. And the only one who mentions the English teacher is Luisa, el profe de inglés. But again, English and English, it's a cognate. They're very similar words, so remember that. Lastly, who thinks teachers are strict? So again, strict in Spanish is a cognate. And as most of you realize, it was Raúl who mentioned the teachers are strict. And the evidence is here. Los profesores son estrictos. And then you can see estrictos means strict. So even better if we have performed better in the reading three uh, about family and free time. But for that, 
you needed to know time phrases by heart. So know your time phrases here is my main feedback to do things better. So for example, in this question in reading form, it was essential to know your time phrases. It says, how often does she play football? And the answer was in this sentence. Juego al fútbol una vez a la semana. However, you may spot it, but if you don't know what una vez a la semana means, you would not be able to answer the question. So, most of the people say once a week, which is the right answer. But as you can see, other people answer sometimes, which means a veces. Other people say every week, which means todas las semanas. Other people thought that it was from time to time, which is de vez en cuando. And some people thought that it was four years, which is cuatro años. So in reading five, it was essential to know your time phrases too, because there are quite a few in this text. So now take your time, read the text, and how many time phrases can you find? Challenge yourself and write as many as you can find in your book. Pause the video. And here you have all the time phrases in this text. As you can see, the regular time phrases are in blue, like los fines de semana o los sábados por la mañana. But I have marked two in green, and this is because they are time, like in what time is it? So as you can see, a las diez y media means at ten and a half, literally. But you say half past ten. Y a las tres means at three o'clock. So even if you don't know the time in Spanish, you would have been able to work this out because you know the numbers. You know that diez means ten and that tres means three. Now make sure you copy the time phrases in Spanish and English in your book. Pause the video to do so and then complete the activities below.